And I'm glad you're on the land bank so I can say this to your face. Land bank needs to stop holding on to property, which is holding up our tax bill. Uh, you have people who want to buy property and they're told by the land bank that they can't buy the property because it's not adjacent to them and all these other things or that they're holding it for whatever the reason. Let go of some of that property. Well, Mr. Jones, can I get you to repeat that question? Because there's so much fire going on here. Oh, you know what? Election time. And then I'm going to walk the microphone back to you while I read it to you. It is clear as, as day the water crisis has had a very negative effect on the city of Flint. What is your view on how this water crisis has affected public housing and your view of land bank? Okay. Well, first off, I'm just saying I don't have a positive or negative view on the land bank. I just, I just want to say that. Um, but there are, <laughs> there are a number of programs out there, a number of programs out there uh, put in place to help fight uh, our housing issues. Um, one of them being the ESG program or the Emergency Solutions Program uh, Grant Program. Um, with that, uh, there are over they put over thirty million dollars into uh, apartment houses across the city, um, and I believe that that will help a lot. You know, there's there's low and mixed well, not low and mixed, mixed income housing. I didn't mean to say low income, but mixed income. So um, uh, the, one of the two of the apartment buildings in their apartment complex that they're working on are. Our commons and Athens, um, and they're clearing over 62, uh, made over 62 units in one apartment complex and 39 in the other. You know, so I believe that they're they're working hard to help combat this the housing issue. Okay, thank you. Ready, Mr. Ball? Rick, yes. Ready, Mr. P. So the the issue of the public housing. Uh, and the, the land bank could definitely do something uh, about that to uh, sell homes that are affordable. Uh, jobs are definitely something that's needed so that a living wage can be made so you don't have to work two or three different jobs to be able to uh, uh, afford a home. And the uh, other question, other part of that was, uh, yeah, that, that about answered my question. Uh, all right, thank you. Ms. Sharice Lee. So the water crisis has affected public housing or housing in general in Flint by obviously people fleeing the city, leaving homes, leaving blight, right? We all see that all over. So what do we do? If we have people who are living in those homes, if you own your home, you take care of your home. You're gonna take care of it and you're going to make sure that it looks nice. So we need to make sure that we get the property that is in the land bank that's in Flint. I would argue that Flint needs its own land bank. Period. We need to make sure that people in Flint are owning homes in Flint. Majority of people in Flint are at the poverty level or below. So that means you can't afford to pay $800, $900 for a two bedroom or $700. That's majority of your checks. So that goes to living wage, making sure that, you know, we're raising the minimum wage so people can take care of themselves. But it's very important that home ownership is key for all of us so that we own something and we can pass something on to our families. I like the fact that the new homes are being brought up in the community. Uh, I have something up, there's something on, on Berkeley and Ballinger, near where I live, and also, like I was mentioning, the South Commons development, so we do have things coming up where people can afford homes, the market rate for all, for all people. That's one thing I want to do is secure for everyone, make sure everyone has the right to live in a possible, in a, in a safe environment. To also, once you live in those apartments too, young people can get their, um, live in a place and also secure themselves to move out of apartment. Apartment's not a last place where they can stay, they can get their, uh, you know, do things to move into their own home. So apartments are the start. And once you build your credit up and live in an apartment, you might be able to get your own home. So things that we have going on, I would support and get more resources to build on that. Ms. Monica Galloway. Thank you. Um, I will say that the water crisis has added to the public housing problem 
but we already had a housing um, issue. And what do I mean by that? It is known that Flint does not have enough affordable housing for a population that is said to be about 40% below the poverty rate. And so we have a long way to go where that is concerned. And, and that's why you can um, commend some of the programs that, um, like Community First, Glenn Wilson, um, and some of the other organizations that are trying to bring affordable housing into the area. Um, but again, we need better partnerships with organizations. Wait a minute, okay, point of order. Um, I thought the first four questions were one minute, and the second four were two minutes. No, we, oh. we, we voted for all of the B1 oh, okay. because of Mrs. Okay, and then just the land bank, I would say, look, I didn't know what to say, Candace, how about that? Um, where the land bank is concerned, we do need a, a overhaul of that. There's no way that purchasing a home should take six months to get into. Thank you. Ms. Claudia Perkins. Well, let me say this. I am, I'm for home ownership. That's what I'm for. The water messed up a lot of areas. When you tear that blight down, build something that people can own. I'm sick and tired of, uh, of apartments. I'm sorry. That's just me personally. We need home ownership. But with the land bank, I'm understanding that they're selling uh, bundles of land to outsiders and the insiders can't get it. Now, come on. You know, it's time for us to step up and call it what it is and do it right or get off the pot. That's where I'm at. You know, home ownership. That's where I'm at. All right, thank you. Say it again. You got 10 seconds. That's what I think. What I said. Man. Oh, y'all got a tough decision to make. Man. Oh, my God. Oh, can I say one more thing? And one more thing. I remember when we had the dollar houses. If you want to bring revenue back, do that again. And bring, and bring some revenue back to the city. At least somebody's in there paying taxes. Amen. And that makes sense. Okay. Her time's up now. That's her time's up now. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. <laughs> As Miss Richards touched on, <clears throat> French schools has a lot of negative effect forces moving against us. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I forgot. We don't. I'm going to ask this way, well, 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 hold on, let me get this right. <laughs> this is what, I'm, I'm sorry. You're good. Y'all, please don't jump me for five minutes. Okay. <laughs> what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask this question, and then I got a lot of last minute phone calls. I put out about at least a month. Anybody have a question? What should I ask the candidates? I had a couple of people that responded, we got together and we created some questions. But I don't want to leave those people out that called me at the last minute. I promised the candidates that I will give them four subjects. And just in case what have is on your mind is not a part of those four subjects, I'm going to give y'all a chance to kind of give them a statement, not a question. And hopefully, your final answer of the day, you can put some of these, you know, solve some of these things that they're they, they're going to they're going to ask you. But first, I'm going to ask you this question. I know Mr. Baldwin called me with some stuff. Miss Gina Lester called me with some. Is anybody else in here that has a question that they would like? Mr. Royce called me. Anybody else? Paul. Okay. So. We're going to do this question, then we're going to let them kind of give you a statement question, and y'all don't have to answer it, but the last question of the day, hopefully y'all can 
put that in and answer, you know, what, what, they're, what they're about to ask y'all. All right. As Ms. Richards touched on earlier, French schools has a lot of negative forces moving against it. I feel if the debt that the public school owes the state of Michigan is forgiven, the money from that will help eliminate some of the Flint public schools' many issues. If elected, do you have any plans on aiding Flint public schools? Do we have? Do you have like? Do you have like? Do you have any? What is your? Do you plan on? Of implementing the program, or getting behind a program that's already going, or standing with you know, we got a lot of right now. We got a lot of people that's fighting that's our school board, fighting with our school board, trying to get this money from what a GIS, Genesee Intermediate School District, mm -hmm. trying to get that money back in. Do y'all have any plans on aiding them in doing that? Maybe even if it's just standing in the room sitting with them as they speak and represent. We got like Miss Claire that goes there and does a lot of talking and stuff. So we're we're gonna start this with Miss Candace. Um yeah, so as I kind of stated earlier when we were talking about the Flint Public Schools, um I'm actually in contact with the superintendent and the assistant superintendent just from working uh at, at the city level. That was one of the things that we're looking at. Um, if you remember, you recall earlier, I said that a lot of times these students will go to other school districts or charter schools and that they'll keep them as long as there's a count day, as long as there's a count day. And then once that's over, they expel the student. The student then comes back to Flint Community Schools without the money. One of the things that I'm going to fight for is if you send that student back to a Flint Community School, then that money comes back with the school. I'm also going to fight for the fact that... Um, to, to fight for, uh, to get some of that debt forgiven. Um, again, as a product as a, of a Flint community school, a strong believer in community schools, um, that they are on the forefront of my mind. So the two biggest things for me when I get to Lansing, what I will fight for is the fact that if you send that student back, you send that money with them, and uh, to have some of that debt forgiven, yes. Okay. I got, no, we got, we got what I'm just waiting for. You ready? I'm ready, yeah. All right, Mr. Michael Clapton. <clears throat> do I plan on working with the community schools? Yes, I do. Just as simple and plain as that. There's not one particular program that I can stand and work with. I would work with all the programs that I could possibly work with. The Flint Community Schools are a damaged school district. We need to get our public school district back to where it was when I was in school, before I was in school. You know, that, and that would take a lot more than just one person to get elected in this office. That would take a lot more than just whoever has, whoever went to the seat going and saying, it, it, it takes a movement, it takes a mindset, it takes, it takes pride. We have to get that pride back in the, to our, into our city, into our Flint community schools. We, got, we have to get it back. You know, I'm, I'm not even a product of Flint Northern, but I know some, Northern has some of the most prideful, prideful, right. prideful yes, people right. in the world. Yes, yes, right. 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 You know, and, and, and I'm just saying that. I'm just saying that just because it's true. Um, I went to Southwestern, but we have to get that pride right back. We do. We need that. We have to get it back. Thank you. Ready, Mark? Yes, ready. Mr. Sherwood P. Mr. Sherwood P. Yes, I most certainly would work with the uh, school board president and the school board members to uh, see what their plan is, and then I can determine how I could help uh, them accomplish their plan as far as bringing uh, money back to the Flint schools. And also, uh, I mentioned earlier about the school aid fund, trying to see if that could be redistributed somehow, uh, and I would work along those lines on that. Thank you. You ready, Ms. Sharice? Yes. Ms. Sharice Lee. So we need to stop putting a band-aid on problems. Just forgiving the debt is not going to solve the problem, right. right? We still don't have that tax base. We still don't have those students in our communities to keep Flint schools going. 
So what I proposed earlier about incentivizing living in Flint, having businesses in Flint, that's definitely one of the things, but the water crisis settlement, that's something that we need to be focused on. Earlier, one of the candidates said we need to extend the timeline. No, we need to get this stuff settled now. They, the state of Michigan owes us and we need to collect. And so what I'm here to do is act as Flint's lawyer and make sure that we get everything that we need to get from the state of Michigan. is to blame. Also, we need to get forgiveness, uh, debt forgiveness. They need to come in and, and you know pay up. Also, GISD, we need to collaborate with them, but GISD is now over the public school systems, or they have the money, and they do owe us that money, so to fight for that, because we all know if Flint Community Schools continue to close schools, those kids do not go to other Flint schools. They go to outside districts. So we can somehow stabilize the Flint Community Schools where we can't, we don't close schools. That'd be my charge. Cause I've been to, I went to Flint Academy. Flint Academy got closed and merged to Southwestern. I worked at Northwestern. That's now a middle school. I worked at home, they had closed at one point. Now it's back to uh, elementary school. So try to stabilize the district. So we're not closed and work with GISD, work with the superintendent to stabilize the district. And also that pupil count is, is uh, it's key as well because, again, urban districts don't get as much money as other districts. And again, what back again to the point where when Flint students leave and come back, the money does not travel with them. We need that. So um, one of the things that all of those that my colleagues have said are, are really good ideas, but I do want to clarify, the extension was because we're going to lose the statute of limitation to charge those that are responsible for poisoning us. So that extension needs to happen. The second thing though, is we need to see why the school board is finding themselves in another deficit. I'm not saying that it's not for population only, but when they closed Scott, Carpenter, and Cummings, it was in the need to eliminate a debt that they had at the time. That was their answer. Those schools, they were trying to save a million dollars a year, and each of those schools was generating over a million dollars because of the student population. And so we need to find out what are they doing with the money. One of the things they need to do is sell some of those buildings. I know for a fact that there are businesses that wanted to come in and buy some of those buildings, and they wanted to overinflate the prices. I know for a fact Second Chance wanted to buy it. They were doing a program and they wouldn't sell it to them. And when they did want to sell it, it was unreasonable. So they need to liquidate as well. Thank you. Mr. Baldwin. We're ready. Ms. Claudia Perkins. Uh, the co-ops. That was one thing that economic, putting businesses back in our area of, of living so that we can build our tax base up again. We also need to charge and challenge the school board and any other board that's holding the money or taking the money out of our communities. I, I'm just sick and tired. Like she said, Band-Aids. We need to stop putting Band-Aids on things and start getting to the nitty gritty. We need to call a spade a spade. And so if it means working with the council and whoever else, let's do it and let's get to the nitty gritty. Right now, we're the Democracy Defense League. We are in federal court with the highest attorneys in this water crisis, we are called upon, and we drive all the way to Ann Arbor, me and Claire McClinton, all the Democracy Defense League people. So we're in conversation with the highest attorneys in this lead fight right now. And we're talking about all of these things. So anything that I can do to help curtail all of this crap and get us back where we need to be, that's what I'm about. All right. Woo. Absolutely. If we were able to get more funding for Flint Public Schools, the money needs to go back into the classrooms. It needs to make sure we have proper equipment to teach these students. It needs to make sure that teachers are paid properly to teach these students so we don't keep losing uh, teachers. It needs to make sure that these students also have after school programs. A lot of the times parents are working nine to five jobs and kids get out of school at 2.30, 3.30, they don't have anywhere to go. They don't have any sports that they can play. They don't have any after school programs where they can sit at and get extracurricular activities done or even a program where they're tutoring these students because maybe they don't fully understand what's going on in the classroom. So if we get any more funding, that funding needs to go directly back to either the teachers and educators who are helping guide those students and the students themselves. Thank you very much. That's the last one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Ball. You can, you can ask, 
I got some requests and we to ask them to stay in the because they're not going to ask Is that first time? Let me please, please, please. Now, uh, let these three people please ask their question and then we'll take a break. A break. They're not going to answer the question. They're just going to basically make a statement to me. Oh, okay, so the, the most important thing I have to ask is, is what are you doing to find out what your constituents want? What have you, what have you, what have you done to find out what I want? What Mr. Oh, we all know what Mr. Mays wants. What, what this young lady wants. What, what have you done to find out the people you, what the people you are representing want from you? Well, me personally, oh, oh. Okay, Miss Gina Lester. Um, well, one of the questions I was going to ask was, and towards the end, some of the candidates touched on it, but we really need to talk about making Flint whole. We were poisoned. We have people running around saying that we weren't, and we don't deserve our money. We deserve to get paid for what happened to us. I'm ready for a check. I don't know about anybody else in this room, but I'm ready for a check. The programs are good. I love the resources, but they're not for everybody. You have to go through so much red tape these days just to get help. It's ridiculous. There's people that can't even read some of the, the language. Me, I call myself a little bit with some sense, but some of the applications and the questions and how they're worded are so confusing, and a lot of people just get discouraged and say, forget it. Um, so I'm glad some of the candidates have talked about us being made whole. I mean that by saying financially. The second thing I had a question, well, a statement about was I didn't hear anyone mention anything about the elephant in the room. I've been going through this this month. Insurance rates. It's ridiculous. My insurance is more than my car payment. It should not be that way. I don't know what the solution is that we need to get rid of now, no fault, but that's what we're sending you guys to Lansing for. And as a grassroots organizer, we want to support whoever is going, like this gentleman said, whoever goes to Lansing needs to represent the people, take all of the personal feelings and all of that, who you owe favors to aside, represent the people for once. That's something that has been missing in Flint, Michigan for a long time. Thank you. Mr. Roy. <laughs> um, good evening. Um, everybody's kind of been talking in general. I would like to know if anybody has a specific plan on what we can do to uh, foster economic development in the city of Flint. All right. Now y'all got some, you got something to ask to? Yes, you do. Oh my God, it's so long. It looks like a ballad. <laughs> Actually, I, it do, I do have a lot of things, but one of the biggest things is that I'm not sure if it's even from, well, I'm pretty sure it is from the water crisis, but I want everybody in this room to take inventory of all of the- Could you stand up, please? I'm oh, sorry. Please take inventory of the last couple of months. I have seen a high rate of um, stroke victims that have symptoms of that, mostly the male. They have symptoms of a uh, stroke, but they don't have the actual stroke and the quality of strokes. I don't know what's going on, but it's been happening within the last month or two. I know a, a large amount of men, male men, having strokes in the city of Flint. So that's something that was one of the awareness that I want someone to uh, tap in on. Uh, and the other thing is an incentive for uh, the taxpayers that's paying their tax dollars on time or even just paying their taxes. Can we get some type of incentive? We can pay the house off, whatever. Can we get an incentive for, for being a good citizen? And can we stop with the penny pension with the little uh, parking fees? Don't care. Okay, please. And I'm going to stand y'all last question in two minutes. Okay, we have another one here. I have a quick question to his point. What are you going to do to fight for us? We have a re um, Republican House and a Republican Senate. So how much fighting can you do when you get there? 
where you got to put, I'm just throwing that out there. Because we're sending y'all there, and we want to see some changes. So that insurance, like they said, and I'm tired of paying a high water bill. We keep talking about the water poisoning. It's poisoning in our pockets also. We keep trying to pay that high water bill. So if you got a state representative house and a representative senate, how are you guys going to be effective when you get to Lansing? It said in infrastructure. That's also a, a concern of the citizens of Flint. Anybody else have a question? All right. I'm going to Eric last. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies first. That's a good point. Hello. Um, so my one of my concerns is is the candidates and their understanding of really what the state representative job entails. Because when you have that understanding, you can pass it on to the people. So then they're not. I don't want to say. Um, we're being realistic about what we're asking you to do. Because if we, if you're not fully grasping what that job entails, testing, testing. Oh, okay. If you're not really grasping what that job entails, then you're promising people things that you can do things, like she said, that can't get done. And so then there's this letdown in the end. So I just want to, I guess, hear what you the state representative actually does so that that can be answered and we can be on the same page about it. So she kind of took my question, but I got another one. <laughs> as you, um, as we talk about education in the city of Flint, we know that it's far away from the district's uh, reps um, preview. Um, would you support the idea of an educational complex in the city of Flint, a campus per se, one large tract of land that contains our elementary school, our middle schools, and our high schools, whereas they could share resources like football fields and soccer fields and aquariums. Is that something that you would be willing to, I guess, find funding for? My other question is, I would like each one of you to list at least one two or three responsibilities of the state rep. Mm -hmm. What are the responsibilities? If I was to read the job description of the state rep, yes. Yes. give me three yep. of those responsibilities that you know you can successfully take care of. Yep. Don't give me the ones you know you can. Give me the ones you know you can. Thank you. Mr. Eric, he's every, the honorable, before I do that, somebody just raised their hand. Well, I was going to speak. Point something. of order. Oh. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> My question would be, with the ordinance going on with recreational marijuana, what will you do to bring in social equity, which was already promised by legislation, into the black community? That's why that notebook was up here with the pen, so y'all can kind of write down a little bit of this. We got another one. I don't have to touch her. I'm coming to you next. Here you go. Good evening. Um, I hear stories all the time how Flint used to be the place to be, and all of you have different agendas. But how do you plan on rebranding the name Flint, Michigan? Hey, Amen. Great question. Honorable. Judge Mark. He can't get one right, can he? Um, also, and I guess I'd follow up with what Paul is saying. I'd like to know what your skill set is. That you, what skills do you have? What training and experience do you, you stand have up, please? that makes you qualified for this job? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, we got one more question, and then we're going over to Mr. Mays. Here you go. reiterated I wanted to know what does those candidates think that the job entails I need to know your qualifications and as the judge said the skill set who of you up there have the skill set to carry this or execute the office all right and nobody wants to stand my way Mr. 
that it made. Honorable First Ward Councilman. Mr. Everywhere. Don't give him the mic. No, I got to talk about this man because this real talk. Uh -oh. This elected official is at everything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So you must respect that. Yes. You must acknowledge that. And he answers his phone. Okay? So, Mr. Eric, Honorable Councilman Mays. Yeah, I ain't never be in jail too, so <laughs> but, uh, but this is my state. I'm everywhere. This is the statement in question. I don't think everybody will fight. That was a political fight, too, when I went to jail. I watched the crisis outside the jail room walk. And I'm just telling you, but we'll talk about that. But in line with what everybody was saying, Paul just married with a lady, and they're saying, what can you do in a Republican-controlled legislature? One thing that you can do that I would do if I was the state rep that I've seen missing, I'm going to be closely in touch with City Hall. That's right. That's What's obviously right. missing here today? Right. Think about it. You got two, three people. Somebody could have been here. City Hall got to be in touch. You got to be in touch, and we have to work together because at the minute a state rep from this area sound the horn, it ain't just the activists and elected officials, it's people. So you can mobilize leadership and connect with the people by just working closely with the city hall. So they say it ain't a question, it's a statement. There's some things been missing that whoever win, I want to see if they talk finances with this financial chairman. Thank you for that statement. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. We only took a couple of minutes. Ooh, that's good. No, I'm just playing. All right, once again, we're going to take a five minute break. If anybody would like to help out with helping me sponsor other events and stuff like this, we have this route. And this man, the pastor, McCatherine, when I walked up to him and I told him about this form ideal, what do you need? What do you want? What do you need? What do you want? What can I do? Do you want to be a pirate? No. Do you want? No. What you need, what you want is yours. I came here yesterday. All that was already ready. We have four people that were here that can testify to that. This was already set up. So I want to, you know, leave them something. Okay? And enjoy your five minutes. The bathroom's out that door. And that's the reason why I gave y'all the notebooks so y'all can write down what they said. And hopefully y'all can answer some of the questions. So I'm addressing the 20 questions that's in the crowd, right? <laughs> I thought it was a honey. <laughs> Somewhere in between. Um, I'm gonna honestly, do the best you can. Okay. Honestly, I'm gonna answer from three. Okay. okay. I'm gonna do my best to answer from the three. Um, first off, uh, what? First question. What? did I do to find out what my future constituents wanted? I'm a fan of old school politics. I love to, I love to campaign, and I would love to get a job too, but I love campaigning. I love to go door to door. I love to speak to people one on one. So as going, by going door to door, um, up and down the streets of Flint, I mean, every side, north side, south side, east side, you know, throughout the district, I asked, what is it that if I were your representative right now, what is it that you can tell me that you want? What is it that you can tell me that you need? And if I, you know, and they would say, you know, we need clean water. We want to, we don't like our water bill. We don't like having to pay a $350 deposit just to get water. And then one lady in particular, I just moved and I had to pay another $350 deposit. Mm -hmm. They don't transfer the water bills. And personally, I went through the same thing not too long ago. You know, so it's not fair for us to have to pay X amount of dollars mm -hmm just to use what just to pay for water that we can't even legitimately use yeah. you know so 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 that is one of the first things that i'm going to do is get answers for that who is it that we talk to about these high water bills because 
Another thing, I used to work at GCAR and assist people with their water bill and their consumer bill. And I've seen people that live in a house alone, elderly people with a $12,000 water bill. That was, you know, that's impossible, that's absurd. You know, if elected, when elected, if elected, uh, 10 seconds, okay, I will go down and I will, I will fight, work on both sides of the aisle to get answers. We need answers. People are tired, they're stressed, you know? Their pockets are thin, and that's just for a necessity. Water is not, a, a water, we need that. So I'm sorry that I didn't get a chance to get to the rest of the questions, and you know, but this is just one that I feel very passionate about, um, and thank you for listening. Mr. Sherwood P. Thank you. With the uh, list of questions, I'm gonna hold them here and try to get to all of them. Uh, what experience do I have? I have certain different organizations. I've been elected to different uh, offices, and I've learned to uh, get people together to come up with a solution for a common uh, common goal or outcome. Uh, what have I done to find out what the people want? I have campaigned also. I go to the gas station. I talk to people. I go to the store. I talk to people. Uh, I go to restaurants to talk to people. So I, I did all of those things. Uh, what, what, make you plan a whole, what can be done? Uh, we have to, the question was rebrand. We have to let people know what all Flint has to offer. We have a lot more to offer than the bad water. We're working to get the water fixed, so we have to definitely play up the good things uh, that we have to offer the city of Flint. Uh, stroke victims, most of that, that the one uh, lady mentioned, probably has a lot to do with the water. So we definitely have to get the water fixed, get, uh, uh, medical and, and insurance and things so that those people that have that can be taken care of. Uh, I, what does the job entail? Which was one that I really wanted to answer. Uh, to introduce bills, to research bills, to sponsor and co-sponsor bills, and to vote on changes to the state constitution. Also to help individual constituents uh, some issues that they might have that they need help with also. So I think I covered pretty much everything. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, so what does the state rep do? Passing laws, repealing laws, sitting on committees, right? So whether that be committees for finance or family, there are several, over 20 different committees in the house. And so they, by their skill set, you're put on a committee to help and to make sure that we get laws passed that are good for the community. Um, as far as my skill set, I'm a lawyer, I'm a veteran, and so what does that mean? That means I understand law. How you get bills passed, if you're a lawyer, you know you can write law, you can, you know policy. Anyone at this table outside of me would need help doing that, but I don't, which is why attorney Kyra Bolden in Southfield, who's the rep for Southfield, she was able to get two bills passed with a Republican uh, Senate and House she was able to do that because she's an attorney and she doesn't waste time because she knows what she's doing. So it's very important that we have people that not only care but know exactly what they're doing because we're gonna continue to get the same things that we've been getting, putting people here to get a check and they can't help us. So we need to take a, a real good look at the people, their skills, the people who are running for this office because we need to make sure that they're able to get the job done. And also about the economic development plan that I have, it's very important that we look at new industry for Flint. GM yeah. is gone. Yeah. So yeah. we need to make yeah. sure that we have jobs here. How do we do that? Solar, renewable energy. Governor Granholm did that, but it went away. We need to bring it back and we need to do it right here in Flint. Don't do anything to us, for us, without us. We need to be yeah. a part of Flint's comeback and we need to make sure that everything that happens here, asking for money and getting a settlement, yeah, that's great. But after you spend $5,000, are you gonna have a job? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna be able to right. make sure that you can pay your bills, the consumer bill? If we have solar on our homes, we're gonna be good because we have the sun that is funding how we get our electricity. Exactly. And so that lowers your bills, money in your pocket. Mr. Sean Crowley. Okay, so responsibilities are great and vote on legislation and fight for residents of the city of Flint. Like my signs say around the city, I'm a, I'm a voice for the people. Also, my credentials, 
Again, I also have a, a bachelor's in social work. Masters in social work also have created programs in the city of Flint. I brought back a citywide basketball program. It's been gone for like 15 years. We're going to our third year. It's January 11th at Eagles Nest in Mount Olive. Come check it out. It's a good talent. It's free for young people third through 12th grade. That's something that's needed for our young people to do to create various things for them that lack of that increases their self-esteem, cuts down their depression, and also we know that young people in the state of Michigan, we have a problem with uh, health with our youth. Um, also, I brought back with um, the help of the uh, Cronin family, Soapbox Derby. So the programs I created that haven't been around in a while, that's good for our city, and, and also with the, with the Soapbox Derby, it's also good for our young people to help, they help build the Soapbox Derby. So that's also an educational piece to that as well. And also back to the basketball program, it's not just basketball, each each site, Eagles Nest and Mount Olive also have programs for, for families, and they have uh, information for resources that we brought to you by our navigators in the city of Flint. <coughs> that would be more than just basketball, it would be education for our families and residents. I'm trying to forget so many questions that, um, talk about my skills. How many minutes I got left? 22. <laughs> 22 seconds. Right. Yeah, 22 seconds. And also continue, I'm a co-chair for the Flint Lincoln Inclusive Games, continue that program. And I've been co-chair for like 13 years. That's been a, a good program for our young people where we um, also connect with our sister city in Canada. This coming summer, we'll be going back over there. This past summer, we had a successful summer here in Flint, and that helps out with the cultural exchange. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sean Crowley. You ready, Mr. Burke? Yes. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Monica Galloway. Thank you. Um, so the responsibility of the state representative, first and foremost, is budget. They are responsible for ensuring that there is a balanced budget, and they're responsible for seeing how that budget is implemented. Then there is the legislation piece of it. Um, but it's important that people realize that budget and helping constituents and being there to vote is the responsibility of your state legislator. With that being said, um, I am the only person that has served on the Flint City Council and worked on a $58 million budget for the last six years. Although the first two years were under an emergency manager, I was adamantly seeking out how to properly do that and I served on the Michigan Municipal League Finance Committee, which was a two-year responsibility that knew exactly what things were being done in the state house that was going to affect all of the communities in the state of Michigan. And so that's important. Another thing is our revenue stream from the state is broken, it's called, and if you get a chance, go to Save My City, Michigan, M-I, city, dot org and look at how much revenue sharing has been lost from the state of Michigan. They have not properly allocated the revenue sharing. In the, since 2002, the city of Flint itself has lost over $101 million in revenue sharing. If those dollars had been adequately implemented and sent to the city, we would have never had an emergency manager. We would have never went to the Flint River. And so those are things that the legislator is responsible for doing as well. Um, making Flint whole, again, that's why it's important to make sure that we don't lose the opportunity to prosecute. When a victim has been violated, the last thing they need is for the person that violated them to go free. Thank you. Ready, Mr. Balls? Yes. Ready. Claudine Perkins. Okay, uh, a state rep's uh, responsibility is to sit on committees and research, and they need to update old laws that are on the books that aren't doing what they need to do for this constituency and, and uh, make new laws. They need to introduce and vote on bills that represent the interests of, of our constituents and create and modify uh, laws and sit on research committees. Also, I have been working with the black clubs, the churches, social organizations continuously. I tried to retire in 2014 with almost 40 years. I ran the Delphi plant. 
So when you talk about running plants at the highest level, this is a worldwide company. I negotiated contracts for millions of dollars. <coughs> so um, I, when I was on the Tom Sumner show, I spoke about the red line, how much the insurances are costing us in our respective neighborhoods and how unfair that was. And I'm still going to fight to uh, make a positive change right there. Also, this water, I believe the criminals should be brought to justice. Nobody is above the law. Nobody. Not the mayor, not the governor, not the pope. Nobody is above the law. Now, this lawsuit for the water is in four increments. You got your criminal, you got your civil, you got your children, and you got the rest of us. So, like I said, we are fighting tooth and nail trying to get a resolve. And when we get that resolve, we need to learn how to reinvest the money. We need to start teaching classes to the constituency so they can understand how to reinvest and own something. And we need to build up our community and not tear it down. We need to put laws in place where we have, like in the school system, training like what we had when we came up. You know, we had cultural, we had social things that we were about, and we are better people for it. So what's any better for our children? Thank you, Ms. Claudia. Santino Guerrero. Absolutely. The main responsibilities of the state legislature is pretty much the same thing as council, but at a lot larger scale. They deal with the budget, but instead of the city, as my current position does for the state, they deal with legislation at the state level, and they also make sure they respond to constituents. And Mark, that is a great question that you asked, responding to constituents, because I know even me and you have always seen, we've, we've agreed on something to disagree on others. It's important for every elected official and every public servant to listen to the residents all the time and everything that they have to say. <clears throat> regardless if they agree or disagree, so they can take that constructive criticism and play with that and use that and use that for a positive thing in the future. Uh, and working, uh, one of the questions was working with the Republican House and Republican Senate. That's a really important question because being able to work with your colleagues to actually get stuff done, it's one thing to get out there and say you're gonna do something, but it's another to actually start working on working on that progress. Uh, when I worked in the United States Senate, I worked with Republican pages all the time, uh, working on in that progress and working for forward for the communities. Um, also making Flint whole, uh, working with, the, I just got contacted by the Attorney General's office, well, advocating for working with those departments and bringing town halls to the communities so that they can have, be able to express their concerns in ways that have been treated, unfortunately, with the water crisis and being able to work towards a more positive point for them as well. Uh, insurance rates, oh, that's a problem, you're right. My, my Jeep insurance has cost more than my actual payment for my Jeep. And it is a huge problem for the city of Flint residents because you can go literally one city over or a township over and it's completely different. Uh, so we do need to work on insurance rates here. And then also one of the other ones was incentives. Uh, really one of the big incentives that we need to do is focus on our education. Uh, we, we are, we have the University of Michigan Flint. We have Kettering University. We have Mott Community College. We have, we have Baker College. Really keeping those students here because a lot of the times we have commuter students that will come only to the city of Flint to get their education and then they leave. We're not keeping them in the city. We don't have internships for them. That they don't have they don't have job opportunities. We really need to make sure that we keep our students and our young folks here in the city and not let them get away. Thank you, Miss Candice. I know one of the things that everybody keeps saying, which is true, um, the responsibilities of a state representative is to make laws and amend laws and sit on committees. I think one of the biggest things that we've forgotten to say though is to serve residents. Your job when you get up there is to serve residents and to also steer resources back here. It's a little bit more than you're just making laws. So there, are, uh, there's a lot of money that's available and that um, other reps steer toward their communities. And I learned that at my time at, at the state legislature, um, being the only person that's actually worked up there as the legislative aide that has actually helped pass a bill that's been done under the Republican House and Senate. Uh, so it's possible to work on both sides and get bills passed, meaningful legislation that helps the residents. The bill that I worked on helping get passed actually was uh, the warning bill, where they had like a week to warn us before they poisoned us. Now, I mean, it's three business days. It moved the mark just a little bit, but we're still working on that. Also, as a result of that, the lead and copper rule has changed, and that was something else that I was a part of. Um, and let's see, uh, I, one of the things is I, I talk to constituents daily. I've never stopped being in contact with constituents. I've spent my whole life, uh, my whole adult life, being in contact with constituents, whether it was working for the state house, whether it was working for the city of Flint as a public information officer. I purposely took a job where I had to inform you of what's going on, where I purposely had to educate you about what's going on. 
um, as far as the insurance rates, I'm actually happy you brought that up because there was this big um, historic talent about this bill that was signed about the insurance rates that just recently, uh, Garland Gilchrist, our first black lieutenant governor, awesome, awesome thing to have. Um, I'm glad he was the first. He signed the insurance bill, and in that insurance bill, they were supposed to get rid of some discriminatory factors. They got rid of gender, they got rid of sex, they got rid of age. Uh, but they replaced zip codes with territories, meaning I can discriminate against a larger group of people. Not only that, but then they're also using your credit score, which is going to um, disproportionately affect the residents of Flint. So I'm going to relook at that bill. We're going to visit that again, and we're going to say credit is not a factor as to whether or not I will pay an insurance bill. Thank you, Ms. Candice. Mr. Michael Clark. We started it. We started it. Oh, he started? Yeah. Oh, we done went through the whole thing. That's right. That's right. This is a good group. Man, you know what, Mr. P? Yes. KD? I'm mad at y'all because I can't ask my questions now. Good. But this one question, I'm going to call each one of y'all because I really want to know. Because this, somebody argued with me. I ain't going to say their name. But this is the first experience for each one of y'all running for office, including the two councilmen, because now you're running for a state seat versus a city of Flint councilman seat. So I just wanna call y'all, talk to y'all personally. Y'all just wanna know how, what y'all experience is, your ups and downs of the campaign and all that. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm not gonna ask that question and let y'all answer it out loud. I'm so bad at y'all. Okay. The last question of the day. Oh yeah, and it was another question that I was gonna answer, but y'all really answered this question. Uh, give y'all selves a hand. Let me see, give y'all selves a hand. Cause y'all answered this question. And the question was gonna be, why should we vote for you on Tuesday, January the 7th? Y'all answered that question. So, the last question of the day. Two minutes again? Okay. Give them two minutes, because I want them to talk. Y'all only want one, y'all sure y'all only? We give them one minute. No, y'all can't answer this question in 15 seconds. Y'all better not answer this question in 15 seconds. You ready? Okay, the last question of the day is, what do you plan to accomplish your first 60 days in office? And the first one to answer that to answer that question for two minutes will be Mr. Sherwood P. One minute. One minute. Right. One minute. Yeah, it would be my intention to, as Councilman May said, get with the city council, get with the mayor, find out what direction they're trying to go in to accomplish what we need for the city of Flint. And myself, as state rep and Lansing, I will pool all my efforts and training and thoughts to help them accomplish what they are, when I say they, what they want for the city of Flint uh, through the residents. Uh, we are finishing uh, State Rep. Ely's term. So there has been bills probably already introduced that will have to be reread to see how they will affect the citizens of Flint. We will have to uh, introduce bills that will help the city of Flint. So there's the first 60 days, there's going to be a, a, a quite a bit to do, but like I mentioned in the beginning, getting with the mayor and city council to see what direction they would like the city to go through with the constituents, talking with their uh, county councilmen, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. P. Sharice Lee. So for the first 60 days, I see that first 60 days starting on Wednesday, because how this works, this is the Democratic Forum, who's ever successful on Tuesday will go into that seat. So we need to be thinking from that day, what are we doing and what are we going to accomplish? And for me, that's talking to officials before you even step in office. That's talking to the Attorney General, that's talking to the Governor, the Solicitor General. Why them? Because the Solicitor, the solicitor General is handling the civil claims for us, for the, for the Flint water crisis. The Attorney General, she's handling the criminal claims. So we need to make sure that we take care of those things. We need to make sure that we get what we need for Flint and that we're made whole. Mr. Sean Crawford. First 
Jason Day's a couple things I want to do for the investigation. What happened to the water pies? Why are those gone? We need them back because people like me, I work eight to five. I can't, sometimes you can't access water. It's only three places left, maybe four. Some independent churches are doing some things. But water pies, we need those back. They were promised to us. I know that because being a part of Mayor's executive team, I was at the table in those discussions. Also, pipes and fixtures. Some people's pipes and fixtures might have got uh, destroyed in the households. Try to take care of some things and try to see how we can get those fixed without residents paying for it. And also back to the school system. We do need that in the Flint Community Schools in the urban district. We need that per, pu per pupil count, the money that they get for each pupil to, to be increased so the school district can be stable. Those are some things, my top three things I'll be trying to do my first 60 days. And of course, work with all folks, work with you know, Republicans, work with everyone to get the thing, get the job done. You have to work with everybody and communicate. Thank you, Mr. Crowley. You ready, Mr. Baldwin? Ready. Monica Gallo. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I can appreciate what's been said. I think in addition to those things, I would um, ensure that I touch bases with um, Senator Jim Ananek who is the minority leader. And the reason why is because he's been fighting for Flint. He already knows the things that we already have in place. And so I wouldn't need to start all over afresh. I'm sure he's waiting for an ally that can bring him the strength that he needs to continue to fight for the city of Flint. So that would be um, one of the things that I would consider. And then also um, seeing who I'm gonna surround myself with. You can't go to the state as the 34th district person without a staff. And so it's important to know who you can trust, who will fight for Flint just as hard as you will. And so those will be the most committed things because you have to have a good team around you if you're gonna progress and do what's best for this community. Ms. Claudia Perkins. Uh, I have a lot of great friends in uh, Lansing already because I served two years up there at the Delta plant. So I met a lot of legislatures up there and I will definitely surround myself with um, those people because they're well connected. And also, um, my platform was uh, community restoration, the school system, the economics, especially the climate control because uh, aside from just the lead in the water, we have other contaminants in the water, TTHMs, which are cancer-causing agents. And that's why they told you not to boil the water because when you boil that water, you can even just ingest by smelling those contaminants. And they're harmful to you, deadly. Also, uh, PFOS and P4. I've taken a lot of classes on all of those things. There are contaminants that cause cancer. So those are some of the things along with the redlining because I'm really sick of paying insurance at the rates that we have to pay them. Those are some things that I would definitely work on the school system, uh, the red mining, and I would surround myself with people that know what's most critical, especially I focus on the things for Flint, and I'd be a voice for them, because I go in like a raging lion. I ain't coming out like a, a purring lion. Two minutes are up. <laughs> All right. uh, Santino Guerrero. Yeah, my first 60 days, what I want to do is focus on criminal justice reform. I want to focus on removing the mandatory minimum laws that we have in the state and also focus on fair sentencing. So that way, people who commit maybe minor drug offenses aren't spending a life behind bars and people who commit serious crimes aren't getting a slap on the wrist and probation. I think that's what we need to focus on first and that impacts a lot of people in our community and the state and here in the city of Flint. And I want to thank everybody for coming out today and may God bless the city of Flint and please get out there and vote on election day and express your right that so many have fought for for so many years. Amen. You ready? You ready to run off? Miss Candace. All right, so first 60 days, I think um, the good thing about having already worked up there as a legislative aide and then just recently working at the city of Flint is the fact that there is not gonna be a learning curve. There's not gonna be much to figure out um, because I've never really left the environment or the atmosphere. And that's one of the things that's going to be most important. Um, because I have very lofty goals for my first 60 days, I'm going to attack that senior pension tax and see what we can do to get that repealed. Because they should 
be able to um, relax now that they've earned the right. We should not be taxing them on their fixed incomes. Um, again, I've, I've been in constant conversation with the Flint Community School Superintendent, so see what we can do to steer some resources down uh, this way. Um, and uh, first and foremost, because I have a relationship with the Solicitor General, I am going to make sure that those who... Uh, the charges were dropped because I was sitting in the room with the mayor when she got the call that they were going to try to revisit it a little later. I'm going to make sure that that word is kept. That is first and foremost on my mind because I, I'm a Flint resident. I was poisoned. My family was poisoned. Friends, residents, everyone. So that is first and foremost is you will be held responsible for poisoning us. Thank you. Woo. Mr. Michael Clack. Thank you, Mr. John. Thank you, Mr. John. My first 60 days in office, honestly, my plan is to form alliances on both sides of the aisle. You know, because like someone asked, the, I'm sorry, someone asked the question of how can you fight in a in a in a I'm sorry in a legislature that's dominated by, dominated by Republicans in both houses, the Senate and the House. My thing is, you have to find alliances. You have to work with people. You have to give and take. There's got to be cooperation. <coughs> so, along with that being said, the people of Flint, my <coughs> constituents, my, my, in the first 60 days, I want to find out exactly what it is that each and every one of you, I know that's impossible, but what each and every one of you wants. What Representative Clack can do for you, you know? Um, that's pretty much all I can say. I can't make any promises to you. You know, I can't say that I'm going to go in and I'm going to make this change and I'm going to make this change, but I can honestly say, I'm going to work harder than you can see that, you, that you've ever seen a rep work um, in my first 60 days. And I want to thank everybody for coming out. Thank you, Mr. Jones, for having us, uh, getting us the opportunity to come here and <coughs> sell you all our platforms and tell you all what's going on. Uh, Happy New Year. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give all of our candidates an applause. And let me tell you all something. When y'all get to Lansing, whatever one of y'all, whichever one of y'all get there, y'all ain't by yourself. Call us, we coming. They get down there, y'all want to push something, and they don't want y'all to push us, and y'all need a little bit of help, call us, we'll be there.